The next part of this session is around integrating risk management into strategic and business planning. This is a critical aspect of ensuring that your organisation meets its outcomes and objectives. I've actually been told of or have had people tell me about the fact that their organisation or in their organisation as part of the risk management team, they are not invited to the strategic and business planning workshops. Now that to me is just ludicrous. Your risk management team needs to be involved right throughout this process. And I'm going to talk a little bit about strategic planning 101 in a moment and how risk management is embedded into that. So but what I want you to do first and foremost in your as an activity is to think about why and how risk management is integrated into strategic and business planning. Okay, how did you go with that activity? I'm not going to give you an answer right now because I'm going to explain it on the board. So strategic and business planning. Well, strategic management is obviously the highest level of managerial activity. It's usually performed by the organization's board, their managing director, CEO, and all the senior management team. The purpose of strategic planning is to ensure that the future long-term direction of the organization is aligned to its capabilities and the resources and the environment in which it operates. You might have seen over time, say 20 years ago, we might have had a 10 to 15 year window or vision for our, our strategic plan. They end up coming back to three and five year windows. And in some cases where there's changes in organizational structure on, on a semi-regular basis, your, your, your strategic plans aren't often surviving two to three years anyway. So yes, it's a uh, a longer term vision, but understanding that the reality of business and government agencies in this day and age is change. And so you need to be able to adapt your strategic direction around that change. Now, business planning is an extension of strategic planning where it's concerned with the more the short term focus. So we take our strategy and we look at it in bite sized chunks, usually in around a 12 month time frame. And we then identify tasks and activities that go against that achieving that strategic objective. But one element that is common across both strategic and business planning is risk. And here is the thing. I don't believe that many organizations understand the full extent of risk and risk management and its involvement in the strategic and business um, planning. And that's what I'm going to talk about during this part of the session. So when conducting strategic planning, the organizations that are attuned to their environment will ensure that once their strategies are developed, the risks of achieving those strategies will be identified, reviewed, and where possible, appropriate measures will be adopted to minimize the likelihood of the events occurring and or the consequences if they do occur. And of course, where do we put those risks? Well, they need to be captured, or the treatment strategies in particular, need to be captured in our business plans. And we'll talk about that in a sec. So the strategic planning process also provides organizations the ability to position themselves in an advantageous position by adopting strategies to pursue opportunities, provided prudent management of risk has been addressed. Now, I'm often challenged by the fact that risk management is a barrier to uh, innovation. Nothing could be further than the truth from the truth. Risk management is an enabler to innovation, but it allows us to make risk-informed decisions about the in innovation that we're going to take. If we did not have innovation, then we wouldn't be living in the technological age that we're living in. Do you think that that innovation came without risk. Of course it didn't. And so we need to make sure that we are looking at those risks, assessing those risks and adopting our strategies or our uh, objectives to make sure that we've taken account of those risks. And that allows us to have that innovation and continually innovate as an organization. So let's look at the process. If you've been involved in a strategic planning process, you'll notice that one of the first things that you do is the SWOT analysis. In my experience, 
Some organisations do the SWOT analysis just because it's step one in the process. And then they go, right, we've done the SWOT analysis, now we go on to the other parts. But our SWOT analysis is really important because what we want to do out of that, um, that SWOT analysis, develop strategies that capitalise on our strengths and our opportunities. We also, at the same time, want to develop strategies to protect against the weaknesses and threats and, if possible, make those threats and weaknesses strengths and opportunities. What can we do to improve that area? We then identify risks in relation to that strategy and revise them or develop new ones on the basis of what we saw with the risks. And that gives us our final strategic direction. Now, that's a very simplistic view of it, but obviously our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats is a really big part of setting that strategic direction.